Chris Cold here with Laguna Tools, and today we're at Pyramid Customs in Weatherford, Texas. Let's go check out Danny and his crew and see what they got going on today. Ooh, this thing's nice. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Make it more better? We are. Came in, it was just a train wreck inside of it, and we redid it all. This is one, we just put a little stereo system, built a little center console Ooh. for it. It's actually kind of a, a part at the moment, but it's yeah, got this a is, uh, I think they made this truck, what, 90 to 93? It was like to compete with the Lightning? Mm-hmm. It's got a 10-speed paddle sp uh, shifter with a uh, Hellcat transmission in it. So this is all uh, that PVC foam board? Uh -huh. yes. Expanded PVC board. And then you just lay vinyl over it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Ah. It's layered in, in a lot of places to okay. strengthen it. Shut that door, you can kind of see our lines and how everything kind of follows through. Oh yeah. No, for sure. And that's all oh, done. Yeah, you know, that's... that's all CNC'd. We got the rear deck lid in there too, that's all custom. And that's where all the base vents through into the car. So I got Danny here. We're gonna go over some questions, talk about his business. Um, so first question I have for you is how did you get into the car industry? Honestly, I've been doing car audio since I was like 15 years old. You know, started in my driveway, burnt up a few things <laughs> along the way. And, okay. Uh, Ended up really good at it. Okay. I've been doing it for like 35 years now. Did you have any mentors or did you kind of learn everything on your own? Uh, eventually, I, at first it was on my own. Okay. I uh, got the privilege of working at some pretty good shops along the way. Okay. Got some good training, uh, learned a lot of things and still, you know, we still learn every day. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also your guys' material list evolves yearly sure. you know oh, there's yeah. always a new vinyl a new foam that comes out that you guys got to figure out how to cut Def definitely so <laughs> <laughs> um what is a good lesson you've learned with doing your own business and running your own business man you kind of just got to go all in you know i was always scared at first yeah. you know i worked in the industry for other people for 20 years and uh finally just Took the leap and you know it's it's scary at first but go all in and i was confident i'd make it work and okay i so, was correct <laughs> there's one thing about danny is he does zero marketing and since we've been sitting here we've had multiple people show up and want his business <laughs> never have i ever seen a company that does zero marketing be so successful i mean he's got i don't know 10 15 boats here his phone's never stopped ringing so in my opinion, I think that your work probably speaks volumes. Definitely so. You know? Definitely so. There's a lot of shops, a lot of car audio shops mm -hmm. and around the area, but there's not really anybody that offers what we can do. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. And, and we've talked a lot about the stuff that has came to your shop and how you guys have, uh, I wouldn't say forced to fix it, but you've had the privilege of making it better. Definitely so. You know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know that speaks volumes, especially here in the Texas industry. You know, or Texas area where we have such a huge car scene. It's uh, you know people that are showing up willing to uh, say, "Hey, make this better." Oh, after yeah. they spent, like you said, thirty. Oh yeah, we, thirty we, grand. We, <laughs> 60 we get them grand. coming in thirty, forty thousand dollars, of, and we just rip it all out because it's not right. So. <clears throat> um, you know, I think that speaks volumes for what you guys have going on here. I think that, uh, you know, it'll only get better and better. You know, maybe, so. maybe one day you'll have to do marketing, but you know, <laughs> I think that's a blessing that you guys don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, we, we've, we've tried to market a few times and mm -hmm. we got so busy, we had to stop marketing. <laughs> yeah, so. I think that's a great problem to have. Sure. You know, absolutely. Um, so prior to having a CNC, um, how did you guys accomplish everything? I mean, you start out with table saws, jigsaws, okay, belt sanders, yep. and and then routers. Okay. Um, you know we've we still use the routers a lot these days, but so at what point in your business 
did you guys look and say, hey, we need to automate this, we need a CNC? Like at what point did, was it like a, a number figure that you guys got to? Was it, you know, a turnaround time? Like what forced you guys to start looking at automation? Just uh, the way everything evolves, okay. uh, there comes a point where you can only do so much with mm -hmm. jigsaws and <laughs> yeah. belt sanders. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got to take the next step, and you know. So, <clears throat> so the the hardest part that I've seen in this industry is the guys that go from making stuff by hand mm. to figuring out how to make it automated. How would you say that that affected you learning the software, like? Do you feel like you relied more on your your employees to help you with that stuff? Do you feel like you Definitely were able to? Definitely so. Okay. Cur Curtis uh, Curtis went to architectural school. Okay. And he runs the CNCs and AutoCAD and all that stuff. So. So he helped kind of master everything and, yes. and get the ideas onto the CNC. Absolutely. Really. Okay. Yeah. And your very first CNC that you guys purchased um, was not a Laguna, no. but. What would you say um, the revenue that machine, it could be roughly, what do you think in the, you said you had it for six years? Six years. What do you think that machine made you in six it years? It probably made us, I'd say a million bucks or more. And what'd you pay for it? Six grand. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good investment, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so machine wise, um, you upgraded to a system that we have that has a full automated system with tool changer, vacuum table, um, you know, at, at what point did you look at your machine and start looking for the next step? How many years ago? How long did it take you to kind of make that jump? We started looking really about a year ago. Okay. Um, it's just a big investment and, uh, you know, it was hard to balance it out, okay. you know, to, to make that step. But once again, it's, you know, taking a big step and just making it happen and, uh, just from day one of us using the new machine, I mean, it's cut down on so much time. Yeah. Um, the vacuum table, you don't have to secure your materials down. Um, the bit changing, so it'll, you know, you don't have to even use the router tables anymore. Yep. So um, it just it eliminates a bunch of a process and really frees you up to do other things. What would you say, control-wise, um, like, would you say the new controller on that unit is easier than the old system, or do you think it's, they're pretty similar? Uh, I'd say easier. Easier, okay. Well, that, that's good. Yeah. We like to hear that. <laughs> you know, we try to make systems a little <laughs> bit easier. Um, you know, easier to learn, easier to train, you know, because we know, um, I mean, you guys have a, you know, you, how long you guys work together? Well, Curtis and I worked together 13 years um, before, before we started. Our, okay. own, our own deal. So yeah, we're going on about 20 years. Yeah. So, together. I mean, you know, you know what he's capable of. He knows what you're capable of, you know, and that helps. That always helps a business, sure. you know, yeah. when you have stuff going on, you have stuff that comes in the door, you're always able to, you know, kind of justify the, you know, what is the outcome of this project, you know, and how quick sure. you can get it out just because you guys have worked together so long. Definitely. You know? So, yeah. Um, you know, looking, let's talk a little bit about um, competitor machines. So, when you were looking at, um, you know, upgrading machines, you know, at <clears throat> at what point did you gravitate towards the Laguna products? Um, Curtis had been kind of shopping around okay. and uh, got a few estimates and uh, some of them were a little more than I was ready to spend. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And then the uh, Laguna one came up. Okay. Um, we got a quote for it, and it was, it was kind of where we were wanting to be budget-wise. Okay. Um, purchased that machine. Actually, changed machines before we used it. <laughs> yeah. <and> <laughs> upgraded. Uh, we weren't going to do the tool changing machine, yep. and we went ahead and and uh, upgraded to that. And I'm I'm thankful we did. Yeah, absolutely. So. We'll give you a little backstory. Is I bought a boat from a gentleman's Action Water Sports. Uh huh. A uh, gentleman One of our named Big Customers. So he his name's Lee. Um, he's the GM over there, and I bought a boat from him, and I wanted to change some stereo stuff. He gave me Danny's information. I reached out to him, and uh, started talking to him, and he was going to fab up a, you know, a, I guess really it was just a, 
screen, more or less, a, yeah. a way to uh, change the the stereo where the, like the stereo location. So uh, we started talking. I asked him if he uh, had a CNC when he said he fabbed stuff up, and he said that he just bought a Laguna. And I said, "Well, I work for Laguna, <laughs> and uh, let me come check your shop out." I came checked out a shop and uh, looked at his machine and said. Maybe you should spend some more money with us and get something a little better, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> more or less. <laughs> and uh, we made it. We made it work for him, and uh, he upgraded to a machine. And and you know, one thing that I will say is is really hard is when customers are doing research online. A lot of times, they don't necessarily understand the real benefits of going to a machine that has more automation. And it's because a lot of the videos out there are a, they're a sales spiel. You know, they're telling you buy this; it's the greatest. But, you know, there's not a lot of information unless it's like someone that's unaffiliated with, you know, the company talking about the benefits and, you know, all the pros and cons, you know, with with the product. That's really those videos where you take a lot of information from, mm -hmm. you know, and I think uh, once I kind of relayed that information to you, like, hey, dude, there's there's a bigger step here. Let's take it Definitely. and you'll get a much bigger outcome. You'll be able to do more. You know, it'll increase your productivity. It'll, you know your lifespan of the machine. I mean, it's something that I'd be shocked if you're not running that machine 15 years from now. I'd be absolutely shocked. Yeah, definitely. You know, and and that's one thing that, uh, you know, I hope that you guys can take from this video is, you know, sometimes talking to some people in the industry, you know, asking them what they have, asking them, you know, what mistakes they made. Sometimes it does help you in that aspect for you not to make those same mistakes. And, you know, Sometimes you gotta, you know, if your budget is your budget, you know, buy the most bang for your buck. I would say um, one thing that I have seen in the industry is a lot of people are, they're spending a lot of money on these controls that are very low quality. They're PC based, um, you know, Mock, WinCNC, they're, they're a platform that's, that's really cheap. And the lifespan of those units is not very long. And if you look at a system that's more, um, it's more commercial, it's, it's more of an industrial control system, you'll notice that the lifespan of that CNC is much longer. And like in Danny's case, um, you know, he's, he's not gonna buy another CNC for a long time unless that one gets too busy, you know? <laughs> but, that's my goal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, you know, chances are if, if he invests in a piece of equipment that, you know, is gonna be a working horse that's, you know, not something that he's ever gonna have to mess with, um, you know, and that's, that's really, I would say what a lot of people in the industry prefer is something that just reads G code, you know, just reads the file. There's no, you know, updates, there's no windows on it. You know, it, it's forces the machine strictly just to work, you know, and that's, I think that those platforms and Laguna's done a really good job with that as far as keeping, keeping, you know, the budget down, but giving you the most machine possible. I think they've done a really good job with that. And, and a lot of our customers, you know, that's the feedback we always get is, you know, they, you know, 10 years from now, they're like, I still love my Laguna machine. Like we get guys at trade shows that are still yeah, to yeah. this day, they're like, they bought a smart shop too. And they're, you know, just ecstatic about it. And they're like, best decision I ever made, you know? Yeah. And it's awesome to see that, you know, small business is still thriving in America. You know, you're still able to make a living. Definitely you know, so. that's a, a big advantage here. Um, any questions for me? Any thoughts? Not yet. We're gonna. <laughs> we're about to get into the EV EVA foam, foam yeah. of boat flooring, yeah. and uh, I think that's going to be real good for us too. Yeah. And you know, maybe here in a few months, we'll be needing to order another machine. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can come back and do a uh, a video on some EVA foam. Maybe you can do yeah. some stuff on my boat. Let's do it. Let's, a little custom swim step on the oh, back. Yeah. I think yeah. that'd be cool. All right, so that sums up the video. Um, thank you, Danny, for letting us check your shop out. Um, hopefully we can come back and film some more videos on uh, you doing the EVA foam you talked about. And Definitely. like I said, thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.